there are so many incredible film trilogies out there. There's some that come to mind, like, I don't know, The Dark Knight, uh, The Lord of the Rings, uh, The Alvin and the Chipmunks. This is some beautiful, beautiful movies that make up a trifecta of movies out there. And the 10th best one of all time is none other than The Hobbit. I know, hot take, let me explain. Now look, I'll admit, The Hobbit is not the best trilogy, not the best trilogy by far. There's some way better ones that we'll get to later on. But, The Hobbit is carried by two things and two things alone. Number one, the first movie is really pretty good. It's not bad at all. I watched it again recently and I was really impressed. Second, Martin Freeman is an incredible Bilbo Baggins. He is one of the most likable characters in the entire Middle Earth universe, Lord of the Rings and Hobbit combined. I'm not even joking. He's better than Frodo, boys. I like him more than Frodo as a character. He's more likable just by nature. And now, the reason that The Hobbit is dragged down to the number 10 spot is for two reasons. Number one, the second two movies are pretty freaking garbage. Let's be honest, boys. The second two movies, nothing to poke a stick at. They're not good. No one would say they're good. They're pretty freaking bad, actually. Of course, part of the problem is that it was always going to be a nightmare to try to make a trilogy of movies out of a book that's 300 pages long, boys. 300 pages. Do you know how little content that is for a trilogy of movies? It's not even fair. It was a losing battle to begin with. Anyway, all that I'm saying is The Hobbit is the 10th best film trilogy of all time. And speaking of the best film trilogies of all time, Boys, welcome one, welcome all to the greatest film trilogies of all time. By Joe, that's me. Today we're looking at the 10 best film trilogies of all time in my personal opinion, and that's a very important distinction. I'm not a critic, boys. This is my opinion. All this is my opinion, and take it or leave it. At number nine, the ninth greatest trilogy of all time, we have Austin Powers. Now, I guarantee you we're not expecting that one, and here's why. No one ever thinks about Austin Powers. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind. But if you really stop and sit down and smell the roses, you're like, man, that is a freaking good trilogy, boys. Having a spoof on James Bond this good feels illegal. It's so funny to watch. It's also so great how Mike Myers plays all the villains and Austin Powers. All of it just comes together so well. Now, the reason it's at number nine, the reason it's the ninth best trilogy and not, you know, third, is because, you know, the third movie kind of sucks. Like, it's not that fun to watch. And they kind of they kind of put Dr. Evil to the side. And Dr. Evil is one of the things that made Austin Powers so good. So that's why it's number nine, but it's still up there. Great film trilogy. Highly recommend. Scooting on over to number eight, we have Captain America. Now, this is also kind of a hot take, probably, if I had to guess. Here's my defense for this. Captain America is the bell curve of trilogies. Starts off, all right, first Avengers, pretty good. Shoots up. Winter Soldier, peak cinema, boys, peak cinema. It's like one of the best Marvel movies, hands down. I love that movie. And then it dips out a little bit more for Captain America Civil War. I mean, Captain America Civil War is still good. Still a fire movie, but not as good as Winter Soldier. However, all that comes together to create three solid movies that put Captain America, the Captain America trilogy, at number eight. And honestly, boys, the hottest take of this is that I think the Captain America trilogy is better than the Iron Man trilogy. I know, I know. Crucify me right now. I know that's a hot take, very unpopular opinion. However, there's a good reason I think that. While I admit that the first Iron Man movie is legendary and one of the best Marvel movies alongside Winter Soldier, the second two are not as good as any of the Captain America movies. Iron Man 2 and 3 are just hands down not as good of movies as First Avenger and Civil War. So I think that it overall lands below Captain America on the tier list. Still a great trilogy, just not in my top 10. But anyway, let's move on and coming up at number seven, I guarantee you're not expecting this one. I guarantee it. Take a wild guess right now. You will not guess it, I promise. Because it's the one, the only, Kung Fu Panda Trilogy. Boys, no one ever thinks about this. This trilogy is incredible. I watched it at a sleepover back to back to back with a bunch of friends and it was awesome. You know, when you have like eight people in a room all watching a movie together, which is what the situation I was in consisted of, usually it's hard to get them to all focus on the movie. Boys, all eight of us were laser focused in on the Kung Fu Panda Trilogy. We were all looking at Poe's fat belly and Shifu's gya. Uh, I think they put something in my water, but all I'm saying is that the Kung Fu Panda trilogy is awesome. The villains, no one ever talks about the villains. Well, that's not fair. People do talk about the villains, but for the most part, the villains are kind of underrated in my opinion. Tai Lung is my favorite villain out of the entire trilogy. I know it's kind of unpopular. I know a lot of people like Shen, the peacock with the huge feathers. I think Tai Lung's better because Tai Lung is just a beast. And I, you know, boys, I can relate to that myself. As someone who is on that hustle, that Sigma grind set, obviously, I am one with the beast. Me and Tai Lung are one and the same. Interchangeable, some would say. So anyway, all that's to say is Kung Fu Panda is seven best trilogy of all time. The only reason it's not higher is because the third one in rewatching it is not that good. I do love they got Walter White as Poe's father though. In rewatching it, I realized Brian Cranston plays Poe's father and that kind of made a, that, that put a smile on my face. I was grinning from ear to ear whenever he talked because I was like, ah, Jesse, we need to train the pandas how to use G. Anyway, moving on to number six. Number six is the one, the only, Spider-Man, Spooderman, and the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. That's a very important distinction. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. I know what you're thinking of those noggins of yours and those big old noggins. Uh, Jared, in your video where you found the top 10 best movies of all time, you put Spider-Man No Way Home, you put Spider-Man No Way Home up there as one of the great movies. So why aren't the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies in this list? Why is it Tobey Maguire? Well, I'll give you a good reason for that. Just because No Way Home was a great freaking movie and I freaking love it, and I know I'm gonna get roasted for that, but I love it anyway, does not mean that the top 
Tom Holland trilogy is better than the Tobey Maguire trilogy. I think the Tobey Maguire trilogy is better as a trilogy. I think it just is. This is the iconic Spider-Man boys. We all grew up on this guy. This guy was swinging through the city of New York with MJ in his arms and we all loved it. As kids, Spider-Man 3, you know, not the best movie, but I watched it so many times because it was just like, you know, it was awesome. Boys, when Eddie Brock goes to the church and he gets down and he says, he sits in the pews and he says, God, please just kill Peter Parker. Boys, even when I was like nine, I laughed out loud at that scene. Because even me at age nine had a better understanding of how the Christian religion worked than Eddie Brock did. Because I know God didn't smite people out of the sky because Eddie Brock's praying for it. That was just, it was it was ridiculous to me on its face. It was so funny. But all that I'm trying to say at the end of the day is that the Tobey Maguire trilogy is really phenomenal. Really a great trilogy. And it's going to the number six spot. And here's a little secret, boys. Here's a little, shh, here's a little something you didn't know about the Tobey Maguire trilogy. Tobey Maguire was Peter Parker, and he was also Spider-Man, but he had another secret identity. You want to know what it was? It was actually Subscriber Man. Da -na 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 -na. Boys, only a small percent of you are actually subscribed to the channel. And uh, look, it wouldn't be a Jared video if I didn't throw in the subscribe button into the presentation that I was displaying somehow. So if you're enjoying the video so far, do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, Subscriber Man's coming to get you if you don't. So please do. Thank you very much. And now on to number five, the middle of the list. Number five. Star Wars prequels. Not There's not much I need to say for this. The Star Wars prequels are a very, very good trilogy, I'd say. I think Revenge of the Sith kind of carries. Phantom Menace is pretty mid, in my opinion, I gotta be honest. But the Revenge of the Sith is awesome. Like, it really is a fire trilogy. And I don't even know what else to say. I freaking love it. We're moving on again to number four. And in number four, do you guys hear that? To me, it sounds like the Indiana Jones theme. Da -na 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 -na. Now look, I hear you already. Uh, Jedward, the Indiana Jones movies aren't actually trilogies, there's five of them. Here's my logic for that. This is kind of my video, and I can kind of make it how I want, and I'm saying that the first three Indiana Jones movies are the only canon Indiana Jones movies, and they're the best, so it's a trilogy. That's just how I'm looking at it. Look, maybe it's a little unfair. That's why it's a YouTube video, and not a college analysis. Anyway, I hope you guys don't get too mad at that. All I'm saying is I love the Indiana Jones movie. The first three, the first three were my childhood. Especially The Last Crusade. Last Crusade is one of the greatest movies of all time. I love that one. Indiana Jones was a wonderful, wonderful character. Really made my childhood. One of the greatest adventures I've ever watched to this day. And look at him. Just look at Harrison Ford. Man, just look at that defined arm, that ripped chest, those beautiful manly sideburns growing in. Oh. Harrison Ford. Oh. Oh, am I recording? Oh, shoot! Yeah, I mean, he's all right, I guess. He's, he's Harrison Ford. He's a good-looking guy, I guess. I don't know. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't know. Anyway, let's move on to number three. And I think you guys probably have a pretty good idea of what's coming next, what these next three trilogies are gonna be. And that's why at number three, we have the Dark Knight trilogy. Boys, I love the Dark Knight trilogy. I think it's phenomenal. Obviously, the Dark Knight movie alone is great, one of the best movies of all time. But what's really underrated and really slept on is Batman Begins. I think when I first started this YouTube channel, actually, I made a video uh, about Batman Begins. I made a great video essay. Phenomenal video. Really, really stellar. Unfortunately, it did not perform that well because um uh because people just couldn't comprehend its greatness i think yeah here it is batman begins an overlooked masterpiece and you know it's, it's got a couple views it's got a couple clicks here and there <laughs> oh i'm still look it was a good video i promise it was a good video i'm just saying it was a great video i think it was just because it was like too advanced like youtube's waiting for the audience to catch up and then it'll show it to them you know what i mean so that's that's kind of my thoughts on the matter honestly probably the main reason the dark knight trilogy isn't higher on my list is because the dark knight rises drags it down a tiny bit batman begins helps it batman begins boys one of the best superhero origin stories i've ever watched in my entire life again go watch my video essay if you want to know more i love that movie anyway we're in the top two now and boys there are two and only two correct contenders for these next two trilogies are you ready because at number two you know it you love it it's the Star Wars Original Trilogy. Boys, enough said. Those three words alone, Star Wars Original Trilogy, are enough to solve any dispute you may have in the comments. This trilogy is what led to trilogies you know today. All the trilogies that we've gone over so far, all these wonderful trilogies, are made because this existed. This led the charge for movie trilogies, led to the creation of bigger franchises as a whole beyond single one-off movies, and honestly, we owe it so much. And on top of that, just some awesome movies, boys. Some freaking phenomenal movies made really well with care, with love, and with some great characters that are iconic to this day. Enough said, honestly, I don't need to say anything else. Irregardless, we're reaching the number one spot now, the greatest trilogy of all time ever made. And boys, if there's any arguments in the comments about what this will be, let me just say that the only right answer is for Frodo. That's right, it's the one, the only, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is the best trilogy ever made, ever, and will never be beaten. And honestly, boys, I, it's 11.30 right now as I'm filming this. I'm genuinely considering whether or not I had time to go watch The Fellowship of the Ring after I finished recording. That's how, it's a, it's such a good movie. The rewatchability is crazy. I can watch this 10 times and I'll never get bored. Anyway, boys, that is the 10 greatest trilogies of all time. Check out this video right here. This is tomorrow's video in Jed Week. I think you'll really like it. I think you'll really enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe as that button says up there, and I'll catch you on the next one.